Release the Kraken. Welcome back, fellow game designers. Uh, in our last video, we went ahead and set up our first level in our environment. And in this one, I want to go ahead and tackle setting up our uh, heads-up display, our text, and our buttons. By the end of this video, we should have some functionality, but we won't be quite done just yet. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, come over to my hierarchy. I'm just going to go ahead and right-click, come down to UI, and I'm going to come up to the Text Mesh Pro text. Uh, you do have, of course, a regular text, but uh, we have a little bit more options with the Text Mesh Pro features. So let's go ahead and grab that one. And once we do, it will generate a canvas for us. If I scroll out, you can see this thing. It is a bit ginormous, but don't worry about that. But this is our canvas. And we also get this wonderful Text Mesh Pro importer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and import Text Mesh Pro Essentials. Let that run. And you can see the package got generated down here. If you want the extras, you're welcome to grab them. I don't need them, so I'm going to go ahead and close it at this time. Okay, now look at this thing. This thing is ginormous, but don't worry about that. This will get scaled down whenever we play our game. I'll go ahead and hit play. You'll see that it did get scaled down, and our text is right there relative to our window. All right, so I'll go ahead and undo that, and I will just move my text um, where I want it to be. I'll go ahead and just put this one up here. Don't know exactly where I want it to be just yet. And let's go ahead and name that. So I come over to my inspector here, make sure I have my text. And this one's going to be my asteroid text. So asteroid text. And this is going to show me the number of asteroids I need to destroy. Now I come down here, and I'm going to choose my text. Now if you're not sure exactly where I'm at, you can see that we have a canvas panel. And we also have an event system. This is what runs our canvas panel, so these things are related. But inside the canvas panel is our text. So if you ever get lost, uh, that's where you get your text at. Now I'm going to come over and I change the text uh, input here. We call this one asteroid colon space zero. And that's going to give me a general readout of how many asteroids I have. Woohoo! And let's go ahead and adjust my position and my height. I'm also going to scroll down just a tad, and I'm going to look for my um, font size. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 34. And then I want to adjust my alignment so that this text reads or is written from the left hand side. So left hand over, and this is the left hand. And you can also do center if you like. So left hand and center. Cool. Let's go ahead and make another one. I'm going to go ahead and just Grab my canvas panel, right click, UI, and add in another Text Mesh Pro text. This one's going to be the building um, text. I'm going to move this one mostly center up here. Let's go ahead and grab the uh, asteroid text real quick. Let's see, our Y position is 190. So I'm going to set that for the Y position of this one. So 190. It'll give me the same height. Go ahead and change the text. I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, buildings colon space zero. Scroll down, make this uh, 34. And this one should be written from the center. So I'm going to go ahead and do center and center. Awesome possum. And I'll leave it about there. Let's make one more UI. Text Mesh Pro text. This is going to be the score text. And down here in my text uh, input, this is going to be score colon space zero. And since I can have a pretty decent sized score there, let's see how far I can go. Looks like I can get quite a few um, numbers in there before it wraps. Sure, 9999, nine, nine, nine. I think that's plenty. I'm going to give this one a height of 190 to match the other ones. I want this one to be aligned over here to the right. And I'll set it to center. And I'll set the font size to 34. And that will move this way. Let's see how that looks when I hit play. 
And there we are. We have asteroids, buildings, and score. Now that I have my uh, text up here, I'm going to go ahead and create one more text. This is going to be my display text or my prompt text. So whenever we uh, start a level, we're going to say, hey, what level we're on. Um, and any messages like you win or you lose, uh, that's going to be generated by our prompt. So we're going to go ahead and grab our canvas panel, get our UI, and then text mesh pro text. I'm going to name this prompt text because we're going to use this to prompt the uh, player. Prompt text. And in here, I'm going to do default message. And I want to make sure that this is not going to wrap. So let's move this up to a position that I like. Make the size. Uh, I like the font size being 36 here. But I will center it, and I will center that as well. And since I don't want this to wrap, I need to adjust this, um, this yellow border here. This is the boundary box for um, my text. So I'm going to scroll up and you can drag this if you like. But I want something more center. So I'm going to come up to uh, the top here and you can see that the width of my uh, rectangle transform is 200. I'm going to just change this to 400 and that should get me enough space to not wrap. And I just want to make sure whatever messages I put in here will fit this boundary box. So let's say maybe default message if I have now, but maybe um, mission complete. Let's see if mission complete fits. Yes, it does. So if you have anything that you want to have the player see, just make sure it fits in the box. And if it doesn't, adjust it as you need. So this is going to be default message. Awesome. Now that I have my default message in place, let's go ahead and start adding in our buttons. I'm going to go ahead and grab my canvas panel, right click, come down to UI, and you can see under buttons we have a regular button and we have a text mesh pro button. Uh, again, we have more options in our text mesh pro settings, so let's go ahead and just grab that. And I need my first button, this is going to be my play button. And then for the text on the button, you can see that the button is actually a little canvas panel by itself, and inside of there, there is a text. I'm going to name the text play button text. So play button text. In case we ever have to get it from code, that's where we get it from. And I'm going to come on down, and we have our um, text input for the button. I'll change this to play. Let's go ahead and make our second button. And this one's going to be our quit button. So text mesh pro button, quit button. And I will change the uh, font or the uh, text to quit button text. And then for the actual text readout, I'm going to make this quit. I'm going to grab my play button. Make sure you grab the button, not the text. And I'll just move that up. Let's see how that looks in game. There we go. We have our default message, and we have our play, and our quit. And if I hit play, hey, it's all there. Now, nothing quite disappears yet because we haven't hooked anything up. Um, let's go ahead and start setting some of these features up. Right off the bat, we have on the button, we want whenever we hit play that our um, message and our play and our quit all disappear. So I'm going to grab my play button, and then in the play button settings, I'm going to scroll down, and we have our button, and if we come all the way down, you can see we have an on-clicked option here. And right now the list is empty. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, the plus sign. I'm going to go ahead and leave this at runtime. That's good enough for me. But you can see this also has an option for an object to talk to. And the object I want it to talk to is the object that's going to be controlling all of our features, like whether it's paused, or how many asteroids we have, or how many buildings we have, or our score. All those things actually need to go to a game manager. So since I don't have a game manager, let's go ahead and make one. I'm going to right click, uh, create empty. We'll call this one game manager. Now I should be able to add that to my button. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And I go down and just drag my game manager 
over to my button. And there it is. And now I have access to some functions. I have some object functions, and I have some transform functions. But because we don't have any code on this yet, we can't talk to any of its functions. So let's go ahead and make the code. I'm going to go ahead and right click, create C sharp script. And this is going to be the game manager. And once we do that, you can see that this changes to a gear because Unity actually has some pre built uh, settings for the game manager. Let's go ahead and drag that to our game manager object. And now it has a script. Let's go ahead and open our script. Go ahead and double click it. And here we are inside of our game manager script. And the first thing we want to do is to um, give it access to the text and access to our scene manager. So I'm going to come up to here to our using uh, statements. I'm going to go just before the Unity engine here. And I'm going to say using. And this is going to be uh, TMP RL. And you can see there it is, text mesh pro. And then I make one more using and this is going to be uh, Unity Engine dot scene management. And this will give us access to our text. This one will give us access to our scene management utilities. Let's go ahead and make uh, references to our text objects. So I'm going to jump down and I'm going to make some public references here. So public, and this is going to be our uh, prompt text. And all of our text objects, or pretty much anything in the game, is a game object. So I'm going to go ahead and use that type, so game object. And this one's going to be my prompt text. Uh, the next one, uh, game object here, this is going to be our uh, asteroid text. And then public game object. This one's going to be our building text. And then public uh, game objects. And we have our score text. And now we have to add our buttons. So public game object. This is going to be the play button. And then public game object quit button. So now we have all of our references. Let's go ahead and save it. So I jump into the game here. Let that compile. And you can see that if we go over game manager, here are our variables. And here are our objects. You can see they're all empty. We need to uh, drag these in here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, prompt text. That's our first one. Just drag it over and drop it in. Now if you click and let go, it will change the object. So just make sure that when you click, you, can't, you hold and drag. So score text, that's going to go to score, and so on. Asteroid text goes to asteroid. Building text goes to building. Let's make sure they're in the right spots there. And then I have my buttons. So play button and quit button. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Let's jump back to our play button. And let's uh, come over and scroll down. And now you can see we have our functions here. And if I go down to the game manager, you can see we have a list of all the game manager functions. Okay, let's go ahead and make a function. I'm going to jump into my code. Come down to our start here. I'm going to change this from start to start game. Let's go ahead and save it. And we'll come back out. Grab the, uh, our play button here. And if you take a look at the game manager functions, you'll see that our start game actually didn't show up. And the reason for that is a function has to be public for it to be available. So let's go ahead and jump in. The default of any uh, object inside of your code is actually private. So I'm going to jump over to the void here. Let's go ahead and give this a label. We're going to say public. Go ahead and save that. And now if we jump in and go to our functions, game manager, you can now see that the start function is available. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. Awesome. Now it doesn't do anything right now, 
but it is there. Let's go ahead and make it so that when we hit the play button, it'll run our function and change our uh, building text. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to do the uh, building text dot uh, get component. And then I'll put some angle brackets on there and some parentheses. And in here, when I give it the, um, the text mesh pro text uh, GUI. So text mesh pro GUI. And then dot. And now we have access to the text mesh pro text functions. And we want set text. And then in here, uh, if we hover our mouse over it, you'll see that it takes a string. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a string. I'm going to do this as buildings, colon, space, and then some number. Let's go ahead and just do 10. Let's go ahead and save it. I'll hit play. And then if I hit my play button, our buildings change to 10. Awesome. Now we also want our default message, our play button, and our quit button to disappear. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So inside of our play button, we're going to add another event. Go ahead and hit plus sign. Uh, this time I want the play button to disappear. So I'm going to drag the play button into itself. Go to the functions. Go down to game object. And we're going to change the set active bool so that it is open. And doing this is the exact same as going up to the top here where there's little checkboxes and turning this off. It's exactly what that does. I'm going to come down and just leave that open. And if I hit play and hit the button, the button will disappear. It turns its own button off. You can see that right there. All right. Do the same thing for the quit button and then the prompt text. So I'm going to add one. Let's drag in the quit button. Make that one set active. We'll leave it open and then one more we'll do our default uh, text here. So that's going to be our prompt. Drag it in and this is going to be set active false. And if we hit play and then I hit the play button, our text and our buttons disappear and we get updated on our buildings. Awesome. And then before we uh, wrap this up for, uh, for this video, I want to make the quit button um, code for that. So I'll go to the quit button here. I'm going to go ahead and add a item here. And then I drag in the game manager. And then I want to call the quit function. But we haven't written it yet, so let's jump into our code. And then after we have start game, I'm going to go ahead and do a public void. And this is going to be quit game. And I'm going to use a shorthand here because um, if you only have one thing for a function to do, you can use the uh, little shorthand, which is equals, and then greater than to make a little arrow. And we're going to call application dot quit. And that is a function. I'll go ahead and just put the parentheses on that and colon. And you can see this will just do the one operation. We'll go ahead and save that. I'll jump into the game here, and we will add that to our quit button. So I'm looking for quit game. Now this is one of those functions that will only run when the game is built. So unfortunately we cannot test it, but it should work. And for this video, I'm going to go ahead and call that here. Uh, in the next one, we're going to set up the functionality of our buttons and get all of our text to function the way that we want. Until then, stay tuned, and I shall see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you enjoyed that video you just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, we're at 1,400 subscribers. Woo! If you have any uh, suggestions for future videos, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. And if you want to keep up with me on Twitter, it's uh, BruceRF1. Uh, that's also in the description. And if you want to support the channel, make it easier for me to make content for you. Check out some of my merch or um, one of my books. But yeah, all that, again, is in the description. Check it out, and I shall see you next time.